Hello, I'm Trudy Friend. In the last program, I did a series of pencil exercises showing how I treat foliage masses and bark texture on trees. In this program, I'm going to show you how to put them together to make a little study of perhaps trees in parkland with a bit of background to go against it. Before I start, I like to take a little piece of rough paper and prepare the pencil because I want the first areas to be tonal shapes rather than too much fine detail. And for those, I'll need a chisel shape. I'd already started preparing it, so I'm now going to take it down and look at the sort of texture that is produced on this paper, which is ordinary copy of paper, with this very soft pencil. And that's giving me quite a wide stroke, and that's what I want. I'm going to start with just a tonal mass over to the left-hand side, being conscious of pushing up, so it's my put-push-pull stroke application to start with, and looking at the silhouette shape, it's quite a light tone so that I can gently feel my way across the form and leave certain areas of white paper and they will represent the lightest areas of the foliage masses. So to start with, I'm going up into the top of the tree and just looking at a very pale tonal shape as I begin to consider the overall structure. You can take your time over this because it's a good idea to sit back now and again and see if you like the composition that's developing and I'm thinking of how I build light areas and then dark behind so that the light can catch certain areas that will eventually have a dark behind with another tree to bring them forward even more. So I'm working across now in a crisscross motion because in the central areas by putting crisscrosses I'm introducing little shapes that I could work on later as structure, branches, twigs, taking it out again to the side, always conscious of growth and the direction in which I'm placing the strokes so that I'm pushing upwards and outwards at the top and maybe pulling downwards a little towards the lower part of the tree. I'm dodging about a bit so that I can get an idea of where these darks are going to occur so that they'll be interesting. And as I said, for the top areas it's put push pull and in the central areas it's crisscross with some pull downs because they will help me get those structure areas in. You can see things coming now, there's a little bit of light there, a little bit of light there and there that later on I can incorporate as the branches. I'm going to take this bit out a bit more at the side to give a bit more interest and down here I'm beginning to come round with a bit of a shadow area. This will be increased eventually to give a dark area beneath. And at this stage I like to start considering the structure of the main trunk and its relationship. So I usually just work along until I get to a point where I think that'll be a nice place to start a support. And because there's a light area here that I might relate to later, I'm going to go up towards that now. And thinking about that. Pulling down. And as I work down, I feel I want to come off the vertical and just give a little bit of interest, a little bit of a slant to the tree. And I'm not quite sure how long I want that trunk to be yet, so I'll work up here again. Remember, this is still an exercise, even though it's now into a study. I'm still learning about where to put the darks and the lights and eventually when the whole thing is complete, if I want to take it into a more detailed study, then I've got something to refer to. So it's always interest of shape, tone, texture and also the composition when we're considering a background. Have another supporting branch there. Very much using the chisel side still, getting my tonal shapes and thinking of those shadow recesses within and working round so that I'm happy with the overall silhouette shape as it's developing. Don't want a heavy trunk like that to not have enough foliage on the top. So I might increase certain areas out at the edges on things like this and get a bit larger with the tree. And it'd be nice to have this side coming down a little bit more so that that one's higher and works up, this one comes down. Now my thought is to the second tree and how it's going to relate to this one. And because I want the highlights to be this side and the sun to be hitting this side, I'm going to work up to that side with the dark for the next tree and cutting in around. 
So it's my up to and away stroke, but it's a bit different this time because I'm not going up to an even side. I'm making uneven edges to bring that light foliage out. Now I'd like a much larger area of light foliage. So I'm coming away from that a bit more and giving this huge bulk of light here, crisscrossing away, cutting in a little to add a bit of interest at the same time, and then letting this lower area trail down a bit more. So that has defined the light side of the tree. And because of the weight of it, I might even include some more on the dark side, and just bring that out a bit more. It's always safer to work smaller than you feel you might be and allow yourself to move out rather than going too far out and finding that the tree just hasn't got the right relationships. It's beginning to come quite pleasantly now. I do feel that perhaps that trunk's a little long, so I'm going to shorten it by putting my tone out here and putting the root system starting about there. So this is a root coming towards me now and another one out the side, and that has shortened it a bit. Now this side I'm going to work out again thinking of the same type of tree perhaps and crisscrossing for the shadow side but because I don't want them both the same I think I'll make this one a little bit higher and make sure this one is going to be a bit lower and a little bit behind the other one. So I'm checking my chisel and dancing about a bit. If you think always of the dark negative shadow recess shapes and look at the way they're placed to help your composition, making sure they're not in a straight line or too repetitious. That'll help you get more natural feelings for your trees. Beginning to think now of the relationship between the two trunks. So this one's going to have a trunk perhaps starting there. And it could be a bit shorter than the other one. And if this one were on a slight bank, the way these trees lean over as they do in parklands, and this one could have perhaps a little bit of a bank coming down there, we can then introduce some sort of pathway between them. So tone across there. And this pathway, if this is in shadow, could also have a shadow going across it. So we have to think of these links and also the negative shape that's going to come between them because that could be quite interesting. So later on I might actually pull something down into that negative, taking care not to make it too central. But for the moment I'm going to go on with this tree with the dark over here and bring in some shadow side over here. So I'm beginning to relate the darks now and a little bit of background, perhaps a sloping hill with just an up and down movement to put in an interesting hedge row or something along the back. 